I am an insane egotistical narcissist and that is exactly why I loved zombies so much growing up. Cause back then, you see, you had a highly replayable experience that many had fun with and enjoyed. But it came with a story shrouded with secrecy and nobody knew anything about it. But I did, ladies and gentlemen. A life where you can't go around every corner you come across just to flex the size of your dick with every single person that you meet is simply not a life worth living. In all seriousness, the secrecy behind the story was the single most charming thing about zombies to me all the way back in 2010. I remember browsing YouTube at a ripe old age of two just to come across these lore videos and theories all made in the professional video editing app Windows Movie Maker. I'm sexy and I know it. And by God was that shit the best time of my life Cause you gotta understand As a dumbass kid If you come across anything that even remotely resembles a mysterious adventure You're gonna bust a nut let me tell you And you may ask Mr. Rakefire You seem to claim that we would bust a fat old nut But how would that be possible if we are prepubescent? Well that happened ladies and gentlemen And I'm here to tell a story Like I remember sitting in my living room And I came across this YouTube video showing that if you activate a toilet three fucking times in the map for Rux. I don't even know if Rux existed at the time, but if you activate this door the three times, a song plays, ladies and gentlemen. And I discovered that a song exists in every single map. Now, this was a scientific revolution which led to an age of enlightenment because this was exactly how I discovered that there are other maps besides Kino. And I remember listening to these songs and taking a keen interest in the lyrics because if you've heard any one of the zombie songs, you know that the lyrics are very specific as they often involve actual zombies zombies plot details here and there one unnamed savior in the youtube comments back then god bless his heart wherever he is pointed this out which led to me having an almost religious epiphany a zombies fan was born on that accursed day and i hear he was a donkey he still is ladies and gentlemen let me tell you i stayed up for nights at a time just going over anything regarding the plot on youtube and around 2010 to 2011 YouTube did not exactly provide the most high quality content. Like nowadays, you know, you can easily find shit on YouTube that deserves to be shown in a theater. In this four and a half hour video essay, I'm going to explore why SpongeBob is, uh, you know, a really good show. Part one. Early cinema. You know, shit like Pyro's 8-hour video, Nexpo, let me know. You know, there's a lot of high-quality shit up here. And that is a huge surprise, because if you've browsed YouTube more than a decade ago, let's just simply say that the production quality isn't exactly even there to begin with. I was in a difficult dilemma, you see. I was dealing with Hideo Kojima, Hidetaka, Miyazaki-level shit gone over in videos made in Windows Movie Maker. Like, you know, you have videos like Call of Duty, Black Ops, Zombies, Theory, made by the one and only game theories of course who doesn't know him okay okay starting off strong starting off strong okay okay like i made my point all right ladies and gentlemen like the truth is this isn't exactly a one-off thing either like this shit is to be expected from a 2010 youtube you know you have the notorious cinematic film uh, call of duty black ops zombies theory read the description uh, made by the revered internationally known figure mr call of duty 121 of course and uh Same shit, okay, ladies and gentlemen, like, it's always Lil Wayne playing in the background, too, like, I don't know. Now, as you have most likely concluded by now, it was by all means difficult for me. Like, I had to go through mountains of dog shit just to get a grasp on this story, and like, all due respect, you know, without these guys, I would have known absolutely nothing about the game mode, and I would probably not even be alive right now. Unfortunately, I have used this game mode as escapism numerous times in my life, but they didn't ever make it easy for me, let me tell you. But I gotta sit back and think about this this for a minute. Why zombies? Yeah, there are a lot of other games with stories shrouded in absolute secrecy, but they didn't ever tickle my nuts like zombies did. So why her, you know? Dark Souls comes to mind with a story that you will simply not even understand because even if you paid the utmost attention and explored every single area and read every single writing on every single wall, I'm kidding, you wouldn't even get that fuck, because the fucking bullshit teleporting dogs wouldn't let you. As shown in the hit cinematic masterpiece film Dark Souls 3 fucking bullshit teleporting dogs, shot by what respected just two weeaboo gamers, of course. Like, that maybe missed a deluxe if I for all I know. Fucking teleporting dogs. Okay, switch swords and start swinging. 
fucking fuck! Now I've simply not gone over the whole Soul series, but I have fully dipped my sack and nuts into Bloodborne. And I can personally tell you with a 100% guarantee that this game makes a bit more sense than the Souls games. And you may ask me, how much is a bit exactly? And so if I were to quantify this unit of measurement, it would be the distance between two atoms in a molecule. And so Bloodborne makes absolutely no sense at all if you don't use low videos on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, because the only things that I understood while playing the game is that we play as a man called John Bloodborne, and we go after this substance called Pale Blood. Now, Pale Blood may or may not be a euphemism for crack cocaine for all I know, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't no. You rip the umbilical cord out from a woman and eat it. But I assure you, my fellow bunkies, that this is only so that we can get the good ending of the game per chance. But as much as I enjoyed Bloodborne and its secrecy, it did not by any means replicate the feelings that I'd had towards zombies. You know, ever since Blundell came into the mix, I always thought that the secrecy aspect of zombies completely went away. There are hundreds of thousands, maybe even fucking millions of people in invested into zombies at this point in time. I cannot flex my dick size anymore, as how can you if not only does everyone possess a dick, but they possess one that's simply bigger than yours, to put it as simple as possible. I am not invested into zombies pretty much at all if I were to compare it to me pre-2016, and I always wondered why that is, and the secrecy shtick was the only thing that I could pull out of my ass as an explanation. But if the best thing about zombies was its secrecy, then why didn't Dark Souls do for me what zombies did for me? You know, Elden Ring just came out. Ah, uh, that one I can understand. As much as I like Bloodborne, why didn't it do for me what zombies did for me? There is a plethora of mysterious games out there, yet none of them do it as good as zombies once did. I really do feel like Kanye dating Dollar Store Kim whenever I touch a new mysterious game, just searching for a high that I once had all those years ago. A high that I cannot replicate, not even with newer installments in the same ass series. Which is why I would like to announce my sponsorship and collaboration in a project of mine where we can wipe our brains so that we can get to experience games and films for the first time ever over and over again with help from none other than Elon Musk, of course. He's this new guy in the block. No one's ever heard of him. He's pretty cool, you know. He said some nice things to this rescue of a kid stuck in a cave one time. The feeling of coming across a video of a guy using the terminal in Black Ops 1 typing some super secret hack of shit to open some encrypted files in a folder with pictures showing concept art of the zombie maps, some text files going over some brief plot details at the time. I fear Sophia has grown unnecessarily attached to me. I catch her looking in my direction, but she quickly looks away. I admit she is an attractive specimen. I should send her away. She is a distraction to my work. Hey, Max, is no bitches. My mind wanders to thoughts. Okay, so with that, we will be putting the gear in reverse because the terminal offers more than just Dr. Max's, uh interesting journals, you know, it offers explanations behind maps like Verrucked with the whole Peter infiltration thing, you know, you can see the reason for why zombies exist with the whole Nazi army of the dead thing, you can open the hub, like, I assure you that the community clearly does put effort in documenting this sort of shit for donkeys like me to study at 12am, ignoring my finals due the same week, but we don't really talk about that now, do we? Now I've tried to uncover some stuff in the terminal myself, and I've found evidence that the zombie storyline isn't what we believe it to be. I have my own theory regarding the lore behind zombies. You see, zombies, the enemies, you know, they're not meant to be taken literally. They're hallucinations. They are innocent people in reality. How do I know this? Well, in the Black Ops 1 campaign, the very first cutscene shows all the evidence that you need. You play as Russian soldiers going over all the ways that you can peacefully invade your neighbor, like anyone always does. And in comes President Kennedy who insults your mother. And so you- But Arab Weekend, he is behind the creation of the zombies as he is in the president's secret service. You may ask me to back this up with a source, but unfortunately my source is that I made it the fuck up. Though I do have basis for this theory still, as in the second mission of Call of Duty Black Operations 1, your friend Sergey will tell you this. Hola buen señor. Le aconsejo solemnemente que consiga algunas perras lo antes posible. Adios amigo. 
And not only that, but I possess illegal footage, now don't tell anybody I showed you this, of the press asking Josh Allen, community manager of Treyarch circa 2010, about the validity behind Arab Weekend controlling the zombies. Mr. Olin, is it true that Arab Weekend has a greater of which is by which he controls the zombies? Maybe. Possibility. On top of that, in the fourth mission of Black Ops 1, you find something absolutely disgusting. Arab Weekend enlisting innocent bystanders to do his evil bidding. I honestly didn't expect such a thing. I'll be completely straight with you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching my video and...